Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming and our marathon of games this week. <laughs> Next will be game five of our 1961 Kalia Stremski replay. Miss Brody and Miss Mags are in the room here off camera. Miss Mags right on the table right here next to me. Mr. Brody in his bed right next to the heater. Still looking to get that extra bed for Miss Mags so they can co-host together. <laughs> so anyway, so game five of Kali Stremski's career, rookie season, 1961. The last game was an exciting one against the Minnesota Twins. They only played a one-game series against the Twins, so they must have had a rainout or something like that in between, as there were a couple of days in between this game and that game. So I imagine it must have either been a rainout or something like that, because I wouldn't think there would be a one-game series. But you never know. So, all right. So the Red Sox will be visiting the Chicago White Sox here at Comiskey Park. Yes, Miss Mags. And it'll be Cal McLish on the mound for the Chicago White Sox against Bill Mombacat, who we saw pitch in the first game, the opener. So Cal McClish had a 10-13 record with one save, 4.39 ERA on the season. 162 innings pitch, 170 hits allowed, 80 Ks and 46 walks. So the Red Sox lineup will be as follows. Looks like a pretty standard lineup. Looks like Dick Wirtz is back in the lineup after having a day off yesterday. So, batting first will be Chuck Schilling, the second baseman. Red Sox come in at 2-2. Two and two. Batting second, Gary Geiger, the center fielder. The first baseman, Dick Wirtz, bats third. Batting cleanup, Jackie Jensen, the right fielder. Kai Stremski is back up to fifth place, fifth spot today after batting sixth yesterday with Paglaroni catching and batting fifth. But today it's Kali Strzemski, left field, batting fifth. Pete Reynolds, the third baseman, bats sixth. Russ Nixon today is behind the plate, batting seventh, who's an awful defensive catcher. Pretty good offensive catcher, but awful defensive catcher. Batting eighth, yesterday's hero, Pumpsy Green, the shortstop. And on the mound, batting ninth, is Bill Mombacat. So that's your lineup for the visiting Boston Red Sox for the White Sox in the outfield. Left to right is Minoso, Landis, and Smith. Minoso and Smith in left and right field are average range. Minoso will commit a decent, quite a few errors though. Landis in center is excellent range. Commit very few errors. And arm-wise, Minoso and Landis are both above average arms and Smith with an average arm. And right, which is where you want to place them. If you um, actually, no, you want to do just the opposite. <laughs> you want your uh, weak arm to be in center field out of those three. Uh, but anyway, or definitely, you don't. You don't want. You want your strongest arm in right, if possible. So in the infield, you have Martin, Aparicio, Fox, and Seavers, and that's some awful defense there, as Martin and. F Fox are both one range, which is well below average, and Seavers gets a zero. So Seavers is, I guess, out of positions. That's why it's usually what they give for a zero range there. So Seavers with a zero range. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a zero range. But anyway, Aparicio is average range at shortstop. He's your best fielder there. Error wise, they won't commit a lot of errors. Martin and Aparicio, a little bit above average, uh, a little bit more than average errors. Fox, excellent defender at second, Nelly Fox. And behind the plate is Lawler. Lawler is above average range, good arm, and will commit very few errors. So an excellent fielding catcher there, or above average anyway. McLish is above average fielder with... And very sure-handed. 
So that's your White Sox lineup. So all right, so McLish on the mound. Looks in for the sign from Lawless. Schilling steps in the box. Schilling hitting 286 on the replay with two runs batted in. And we're just going to start going by their actual stats as we've got a few games in now. I mean by their uh, replay stats. You can take a look at their average stats there. I won't be mentioning those. All right, so here's the windup and the pitch by McLish. And that'll be a base hit. So good start for the Red Sox. As Schilling reaches with a single. Next up is Gary Geiger, who had a good game last game. Average up to 313 with one run batted in. So McLeish looks in for the sign from Lawler. Looks the runner back. Schilling being held on by Seavers. And it looks like they're gonna the bunt is going to be on. Geiger is in. Above average bunter. And it will be Geiger gets it down. And successfully advances Schilling the second. So a runner in scoring position for Vic Wirtz. He owns one of the two Red Sox home runs, the other by Pumpsy Green. Hitting just 091 and one hit and 11 at bats. That one hit was the home run. Two runs scored. RBI opportunity here for Wirtz. Here's the pitch by McLish. And he'll pop up the first for out number two. So Jackie Jensen with an opportunity here. He's also hitting 313. With two runs batted in. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a range play at Comiskey Park. As you can see, we have a picture of Comiskey Park here. We did a little trouble loading it at first, but uh, we were forgetting, forgetting to put the E before the Y in Comiskey, so that's why it wasn't loading before. So 3 1. So that'll be a ground ball to Fox. Fox handles it over to Seavers. And the Red Sox are down in the first. And as you can see, Mon Boquette, does his name does not fit here. So it's just a bunch of dashes and dots like Morse code. So Mon Boquette has pitched one game. He's 0-1 with a 2.25 ERA. Pitched a fine game, but ended up on the losing end of it. As he allowed just two runs. I think they lost 2-1. to one. That was the score, but anyway. So he's pitched eight innings, allowed eight hits, struck out eight, and walked one. So he had a fine outing. Just Red Sox could not score enough runs. So the lineup for the hometown White Sox is as follows: Luis Aparicio, shortstop, bats first. Nelly Fox. We'll get a little more on him when he comes up to bat. Bat second, Jim Landis, the center fielder, bats third. Roy Seavers will bat cleanup and play first. Left fielder is Minnie Minoso batting fifth. Batting sixth is Al Smith, the right fielder. J.C. Martin is your right fielder batting, I mean, is your third baseman batting seventh. Behind the plate is Sherm Lawler batting eighth. And batting ninth will be the pitcher, Cal McLish. So Aparicio hit 272 with six homers and 45 runs batted in. You can see I did play one other White Sox game earlier this year. So Mamba Cat looks in for the sign from Nixon. Here's the windup and the pitch. And that is going to be a single. So Aparicio on with a leadoff single. So the Red Sox outfield is as follows. Yastrzemski, Geiger, and Jansen. Yastrzemski and Geiger average range. 
and Jensen above average. Shremsky will commit the most errors out of those few with a, with a 35% chance on the error check. Geiger and Jensen only a three. They're excellent chance defenders there. All three of them have above average arms. Reynolds, Green, Schilling, and Wirtz. Reynolds back in the lineup after a day off yesterday. Reynolds and Green are below average range. Schilling above average and Wirtz average. Green will commit the most errors. Not very sure handed out there. Reynolds below average error wise will commit a fair share of errors. And Schilling excellent. Does not commit many errors at all. Although we did commit an error the other day, and I think it was in yesterday's game. And Wirtz commit a few errors, but not a heck of a lot. So behind the plate is, like you said, Nixon. He's an awful, his awful range is just a one. 20 error rating, which is as awful as Butch Hobson territory there. And a plus two arm. And I think the, the highest I've seen is plus three. So not quite the worst, but pretty close. So very poor defensive catcher there. Decent bat, but will not uh, help you uh, defensively that much. So, all right. So Nellie Fox, and as we said, we're going to give you a little story about Nellie Fox. So Nellie Fox hit 251 with two homers and 51 runs batted in. Now, the Hall of Famer there um, has an interesting claim to fame here. Not very interesting, but some of you may know it. But he is the third toughest batter in Major League history. Yes, Major League history, the third toughest batter to strike out. So, trying to think of the guy. I think it was Bill Sewell. Sewell was the toughest batter. But just looking at his stats, just to going over that quickly. We'll tell you his strikeout totals for his career. Pretty amazing when you look at it. So Nellie Fox struck out a total, and I mean total, of 216 times in his career. Now that may not seem like any significant, but when you consider he had over 10,351 plate appearances. It's pretty astounding. So that would be... That means he would strike out once every... I want to say 51, 52 at-bats, something like that. Give you the exact amount as we get our calculator out. So once every fifty at bats, oops, as we hear our screensaver from Baldur's Gate on our other thing, I forgot we had on there. So let's see. Let's divide that two hundred and sixteen. Divided by 10,351 at-bats. Let me get that to register. Hold on. So that's a strikeout rate of 2%. <laughs> it's a pretty phenomenal. So it's basically one every 50 at-bats, or twice two for every 100 at-bats. So pretty pretty amazing there. Pretty amazing eye there. Out of curiosity, let's find out how many times he walked. He walked 719, so he did, he was put the ball in play quite a bit, let's just say that. Had a 348 career on base percentage. Hall of Famer, definitely. Unfortunately, he passed away at only 47 years of age from skin cancer. 
Uh, anyway. So that's Nelly Fox's claim to fame for his career. Pretty amazing. Uh, I. All right, so Mamba Cat will face Fox here. And it was ironically, <laughs> I think when I mentioned it in one of my last... I don't know if I even... Yeah, actually, I didn't record it, I don't think. But when I, when I was thinking about it, I looked up the stat when I was playing in the last game. And he ended up striking out in the ninth inning, uh, which, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. But as you can see, his um, only a two here for a K to on his uh, card against lefties and against righties. So I think that will adjust too based upon, um, I don't know if that's Comiskey part of the adjustments in there already or not. Let's just see if it happens to come up. No, that won't come up. But I think I think that's two and two there. I think that will go to zero if, uh, let me just see what his actual card is. Yeah, that's all right. I don't think I can check it. Uh, let's just see here. Uh, can I check this card here? No. There should be a way to check his card during in the game. But again, I don't think you can here once you start the game. You can outside the game, but anyway, it's still pretty amazing. So, all right, so 6-4. Uh, 6-5. So that is going to be a ground out to Schilling. Schilling over to first. Oh, actually, Schilling over to second, back to first, and hits into the 4-6-3 double play. So that'll erase the base runner. So two down now for Jim Landis, center fielder. 283 hitter with 22 homers and 85 runs batted in the actual season. And he'll fly out to East Trump's game left, and that'll do it. So after one full, no score. So McLeish will face Yastrzemski, Runnels, and Nixon. Yastrzemski had a big double in the 10th inning prior to, and, and scored on Pumpsy Green's two-run homer as the Red Sox won in extra innings against the Twins. So Yastrzemski so far is hitting... 200 on the season with a run bat with our with a run scored. So McLish delivers and he'll reach on an error by Aparicio. Aparicio is normally sure handed as he has, but unfortunately, well, we'll actually his range is sure handed, but his error check is. He's susceptible to some errors. So a two-out base runner for the Red Sox here in the top of the second. Brings up Pete Runnels. Runnels off to a good start. Hitting 357 with two runs batted in. And Yastrzemski is going to steal. And he is going to be nailed. So Lawler guns him down. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. Actually, no, that's two outs, sorry. I mean, one out. <laughs> I'm used to the Stremski batting third from the 1967 season. So, bear with me on that. So, one down now. And that's going to be a base hit for Runnels. So pass Martin. Actually, infield single. So one down and one on. For Russ Nixon, the catcher. Nixon off to a slow start, hitting just 143 in seven at bats. What's a 289 hitter on the actual season? So this is going to be a range check at, I mean, yeah, ballpark check at Comiskey. And that'll be a ground out to Aparicio at short. 
over deceivers at first. Or should I? It'll be force out at second. So he'll. Still thinking there's more than outs than there are. All right, so Russ Nixon reaches on the field fielder's choice. So two down, two outs, and one on. That'll bring up Pumpsy Green, yesterday's hero. Hit his first homer, hit hitting 214 on the season with a homer and two runs batted in. Both the homer and two runs batted in coming in, and the run scored actually coming on his game winning home run. And he'll strike out this time. Uh, Red Sox are down in the second. So after one and a half, no score. So it'll be Sievers, Minoso, and Smith up for the White Sox. Sievers hit 295 with 27 homers and 92 runs batted in. So while an awful fielder, a, a, a good hitter with a lot of power. And it's going to be a range check. So it's going to be a range check on Green. Green gets to it and throws him out for out number one. So it'll bring up Mini Minoso. Minoso hit 280 with 14 homers and 82 runs batted in in 61. And he'll fly out to right for out number two. So two gone in the White Sox second. Brings up Al Smith, the right fielder. He hit 278 with 28 homers and 93 runs bat in. So the White Sox with a lot of power, especially with the heart of the lineup. So Mama Cat has to be careful. Especially the righty batters where he's susceptible 1 to 18 roll. So the home run question marks. He's going to have to watch out for that. And does he have a home run question mark? Yeah, he does. So 6 3. Out. And he'll fly out to center. Have you and picked your designated driver for this evening? Please remember to drink responsibly. And that'll do it for the. White Sox in the second. So we head to the third. No score. So it'll be Mamba Kett in the top of the order. Schilling and Geiger up against Mc McLish. Mamba Kett 0 for 2 so far in the season. A 130 hitter. And he'll strike out for out number one. So showing up now, one for one. And he'll reach on an error by F Fox. So normally the short-handed Fox boots this one. So one on and one out. Brings up Geiger. Geiger bunted his first time up. And he's going to line out to Aparicio. For, and Aparicio gets it and fires over to Seavers. And they get him. So Schilling is doubled up. And that's it for the Red Sox. In the top of the third. So after two and a half it's... Red Sox nothing and the White Sox nothing. So it'll be Martin, Lawler, and McClish. Bottom third of the order for the White Sox here in the third against Mumba Cat. Martin hit 230 with five homers and 32 runs batted in. 61. And Martin is going to take Mumba Cat deep. Definitely big mojo there. Thank you, Stuart Scott. And Martin puts the White Sox on the board 1-0 on a solo home run. Next up will be number 8 hitter, Sherm Lawler. 
Well, I hit 282 with seven homers and 41 runs batted in. And he'll get a base hit. So that'll bring up the pitcher, McLish. And doesn't have, didn't say he's going to bunt, but I think we're going to have him bunt. One sixty-seven here. Yeah, we're gonna bunt. So McLish is gonna bunt. I think that's what this team would have him do. And it's successful. So that'll move Shalala in scoring position. That brings up Aparicio a one for one. And that'll be a single. And Lawler is going to try to score, and he's going to be thrown out at the plate. But Aparicio will advance on the throw. So a big out. As Jensen guns down Lawler at the plate to prevent run number two from coming home. So it'll be two down with Aparicio in second. For Nelly Fox, all for one chance for him to atone for his error. Did not lead to any Red Sox runs, but I'm sure you feel would like to knock in a run here, help his own cause. Oh, and it's going to be an error on Green. Pumpsy Green commits the error, so Fox will reach on the error. So that'll put runners at the corners. For Jim Landis, 0 for 1. So Mama Cat looks in and delivers. Mama Cat definitely wants to keep it a one run game here. Landis 0 for 1 in the day. And he'll ground out to third. And that'll do it. But the White Sox score one on the solo home run by J.C. Martin and take a 1-0 lead headed to the fourth. So McLish with the lead now. Wirtz will lead it off. Wirtz is 0 for 1 on the day. And he'll strike out. So that'll bring up Jackie Jensen also 0 for 1. Oh, no, that roll is too high, so it's not going to be a home run. It'll be just a long fly ball out to Smith. And we have two down in the Red Sox, top of the fourth. Next up, Kyle Stremski, or for one on the day. And he'll strike out. Okay, Stremski now 0 for 2. Brings up Roy Sievers, 0 for 1. And back-to-back case. -back and McLish is, sets the Red Sox down 1-2-3. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth with the White Sox up 1-0. So Mamba Kett will face Minoso, Smith, and Martin. Minoso 0 for 1. And he'll ground out to... Schilling over to Wirtz for out number two. Al Smith, 0 for 1. And that'll be a base hit to center. So Smith on with a two out single. So that brings up J.C. Martin who homered his first time up to put the White Sox ahead 1-0. Which is where we stand now. Oh, he has a chance to go back to back here. No, unfortunately, that roll, 20 roll was too high. He needed a 1 to 7. I was unable to go back to back. Instead, he'll ground out to green at short. And that'll do it for the White Sox in the fourth. So we head to the fifth. 
the score one nothing Chicago. So the Red Sox will have Reynolds, Nixon, and Green up. And it'll be a base hit for Reynolds. So, so a good start for the Red Sox here in the fifth. Not sure exactly why they why they're doing the drum thing at Comiskey Park for the Red Sox. Unless there must be a lot of Red Sox fans there. Alright, so next up will be Russ Nixon. He's 0 for 1 in the day. And he's going to get a base hit. And Runnels is going to try to stretch it to third, and he's going to be gunned down. Don't know what he was thinking there. So Runnels with a bad base running blunder there. Gets thrown out at third as the Red Sox had the first two runners on. Already in scoring position, so I don't know what he was thinking there. So Green up now. Struck out his first time up. And that's going to be hit to Aparicio at short. Over to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. So they do get the lead runner. So two down now with Green at first for Mamba Cat. Mamba Cat struck out his first time out. Oh, a home run, but definitely not for Mamba Cat. You see, he's now has no power. Steady grounds out back to the pitcher. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the fifth. So halfway through, it's Chicago 1 and Boston nothing. Good pitchers duel. After the last game, we saw, I believe it was 16 runs scored. So far, just one halfway through. So it'll be Lawler, McLish, and Aparicio up for the White Sox. Lawler one for one. So that's going to be a pop-up behind the plate. In front of the plate, actually. Nixon sizes it up, makes the catch. So Nixon, who has poor defensive range, is able to get to that one. And record the first out of the fifth. So it brings up McClish. Bunted his first time up. And he'll strike out now. Second strikeout from Mamba Cat. So it brings up Abrishio. He's two for two on the day. And he'll ground out to first. Be sure to visit our concession stands. And that'll do it for the White Sox in the bottom of the fifth. So after five full, Chicago leads by one. So to bring up Schilling, who's one for two on the day. And it'll be a ground out to Martin at third over to Seavers for out number one. So next up is Geiger. Geiger over one in the day. Red Sox have managed four hits off of McClish, but no runs. Hey, and Geiger's going to get himself a double. So he'll be tying runs in scoring position now for Dick Vic Wertz. Vic Wertz. Sounds German there. 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Red Sox would love to get this run in and tie the game. Possible error here. And that's going to be an error on Martin at third as he boots it. So Geiger will move right over to third. So that'll put runners at the corners with the one down. For Jackie Jensen. For two on the day. And he's going to ground one the third. And yes, Geiger's excellent speed, so we're going to definitely try to get him to score. So yes. 
Defense try the out at home. We're, set, we're going to try for turn two. So Geiger will score. And they're only going to get the middle runner. As Jensen gets himself an RBI ground out. So the Red Sox tie the score. So it'll bring up Yastrzemski. 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And he's going to pop up the first. Range check on Seavers. And now Seavers has got a 2. Before he had a 0. That's weird. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe that is going to be an error. Let's see here. So Geiger doubled. So there's one out and a double. And safe on an error by the third baseman, Martin. So let's just say that he got retired. So that would make it two outs. And he could have moved over to third there. And then this would have been out number three. So that is a, I think that is an unearned run. She one out there. Yeah, he doubled there. Then Wirtz came up. So that would have been two outs if they retired Wirtz. So that would have made it two outs and a runner on third, let's just say. He moved over one. Okay, so two outs, uh, sorry, but a runner in third with two outs. And then, Wirtz, he reached, oh, Wirtz was forced out at second. So I think that would, that still would have been out number, that would have been out number three, though. It would have been Wirtz, it would have been Geiger, because they would have retired Geiger at, at first for out number three. So that's going to be unearned. Yeah, that'll be unearned. So the Red Sox score an unearned run. And after five and a half, tied 1-1 one, one now. So it'll be Fox, Landis, and Seavers up for the White Sox. And that'll be a base hit for Fox. So a good start for the White Sox. Trying to get that run back. So Jim Landis up now 0 for 2. And that's gonna, the Red Sox are going to turn 2. Green over to Schilling to Wirtz. 6-4-3 double play. So the base is empty now for Severs. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. So Mamba Cat very happy about that double play. And it'll be a base hit. So Seavers interfere with play on the field will be escorted from the stadium. So Seavers will reach on a two out single. It brings up Minoso who's 0 for 2. And White Sox got something going here in the sixth with two down. Seavers holds at second. So runners on first and second. Two down for Al Smith, who's one for two. Mamba Kett confers with Nixon. Nixon goes back behind the plate. Mamba Kett really loved to get out of this one with no damage. Oh, a range play. Uh, and it's going to drop in in front of Geiger. That's going to bring one run in, and that's going to score two. As long as we're off on the pitch. So the White Sox score two runs on a two run single by Minoso, moving the second on the throw home. So the Red Sox now trail 3-1. to one. J.C. Martin, who hit a solo home run, 1-2, is up now. 
The White Sox van fans happy about that. Oh, and it's going to be a base hit by Martin. So Martin's going to drive in his second run. And it's a 4-1 to one lead now. Uh, so action in the Red Sox pen. Let's check out and see this here. See if we want to bring in a reliever here. Nixon goes up stalling for time. Wow, in reality, both pitchers pitched a complete game. A game which the White Sox won. Three to two. Hmm. All right, so what are you going to do here? Go leave Mambo Cat in. At least for one more batter, see if you can get out of this inning. So it brings up Sherm Lawler, who's one for two. He's going to get a base hit. Martins holds at second. So, yeah, hoping to get to the pitcher's spot here. Check out McClish's stats. He's still got a lot of stuff left in the tank, so he's got a three-run lead now, so we're going to let him hit. Struck out his first time out. And also reached on a sacrifice bunt, I believe. And he strikes him out. So, Mama Kick gets out of the inning, but not before the... White Sox score three and take a four to one lead. Headed to the seventh. So McLish with a three run lead. Ronalds, Nixon, and Green up now. Ronalds two for two. And he'll get a third hit, so Ronalds having a good day today. Three for three. Last two games have been good. So that brings up Russ Nixon, one for two. It's going to be a range play. And that's going to be a... Oh! So Martin robs him of a base hit. Only play is the first. But I definitely saved at least a single there. So Reynolds... Goes the second on the fielder's choice. So that brings up Green, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And he strikes out again. So that brings up Mamba Cat, and we're going to definitely pinch hit from Mamba Cat here. So Mamba Cat's day will be done. And the Red Sox didn't really use any pinch hitters. But Billy Harrell was a pinch runner, and he moved to play third base. So let's check him out. Billy Harrell, 37 at bats. Yeah, he's more like a pinch runner defensive replacement guy. So let's see with the computer picks here. Joe Ginsburg. 222 hitter. Eh. Let's see what we got here. Should we do uh, Rip Okowski? Let's let Frank Malzone come in to pinch hit. So Frank Malzone will come in to pinch hit. It's only hit, this is his first. He's only had one at bat, 0 for 1. 266 on the season with 14 overs and 87 runs batted in. So Malzone in the RBI opportunity here. So McLish looks in for the sign from Lawler. Here's the windup in the pitch to Melzone. And he'll reach on a walk. So that'll bring up the tying run. Comes to the plate with Kurt Schilling. No, you're right. Kurt Sch Chuck Schilling. <laughs> Managed to avoid that, but this time I couldn't. So hopefully he can come through with some heroics like Kurt Schilling did. So one, one for three on the day. Representing the tying run. And he gets him. So McLish gets him, and that'll do it for the Red Sox as they fail the score despite bringing up the tying run to the plate. All right, so we get a lefty and a righty coming up. Lefty, righty, and then another righty. 
Uh, Billy Muffet pitched yesterday, so we can't bring him in. Or he pitched a couple days ago. I suppose we could bring him in, but... Yeah, we'll bring him in. Why not? He's had a few days off. We'll bring him in. Or we could bring in Tra Tracy Stallard again. Let's bring in Tracy Stallard. Stallard comes in. He pitched a couple days ago against the Twins. They've had a few days off in between, so he's fresh. So Aparicio leads it off, top of the order. He's two for three on the day. Red Sox need a shutdown inning out of Stallard. And not a good start as Aparicio lines a single to left. And he's going to try to steal. And he will be successful. So, so Aparicio quickly in scoring position with nobody out. Fox up now. One for three on the day. So he lines out to left for out number one. So it brings up Jim Landis, who's 0 for 3 on the day. And he'll draw a walk, so runners on first and second with one down. For Roy Sievers, 1 for 3 with a run scored. The Red Sox really playing, hoping to turn 2 here. And they, oh, way out of there. It's, so Sievers will walk to load the bases. Hmm. He's got a fort. We're forced to bring in the infield now. As a get, get double play is not guaranteed. So the Red Sox bring the infield in. As Minoso is up now. He's one for three with a run scored. And a big strikeout for Stallard. So he's one out away from getting out of this. But he'll have to face Al Smith, who's two for three with a double. Two runs batted in and a run scored. Oh, range play at Comiskey Park. Oh, it's going to be a rare play. This might not be good. Oh, it is good, though. Liner to second base who attempts to double up the closest base runner. Doesn't really matter because I think there was two outs anyway. Successful range play by Schilling. And the Red Sox get out of it, despite Stauer loading the bases. So no further damage, and it remains 4-1 to one going into the 8th. Red Sox really need to put some runs on the board here. Geiger 1-2 for two with a double, and run scored. Scored the only Red Sox run. We'll let Nicholas start off the inning anyway. And that'll be a base hit for Geiger. As he holds with a single. I think that's going to be it for McGlish. Oops. Alright, so we got a lefty and a righty. So let's see who the computer picks here. There wasn't a relief pitcher used. Uh, maybe. Top of the eighth. Yeah, he could go a couple innings, and he's our main closer. Why not bring in the closer here in the eighth? It's frequently done back then. More than one inning. So Turk Lone comes in. Seven and five record with 11 saves, 2.76 ERA. 101 innings pitched, 87 hits allowed, 50 walks and 32, I mean, 50 strikeouts and 32 walks. So runner on first. Seavers holding him on. Ort's up 0 for 3 today with a strikeout. And that'd be a base hit. As Geiger holds it second. So a tying run comes up. Jensen as Lawler goes out and talks with Lone. Aparicio and Fox also meet with them. Make sure they're all on the same page. And 
And that's going to be a walk to Jensen to load the bases. So the Red Sox have loaded the bases for nobody out for Captain, well, not Captain, but Kyle Yastrzemski. If he can get a hit here, he'll be one step closer to being called Captain. So the base is loaded with nobody out and Yastrzemski up. So Lone's got to bear down here and get the rookie. Yastrzemski 0 for 3 on the day with a strikeout. So here we go. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, well, Yastrzemski avoids the strikeout. Good, 5-1. And they're going to go for the double play. They'll concede the run here. Going to try for the double play. Yes, we are. And Yastrzemski is going to hit into the 6-4-3 double play. Run does come home. No RBI for Yastrzemski. The Red Sox at least get one out of it, but they could have gotten a lot more. But Yastrzemski hits into the double play. Much to the Red Sox dugout chagrin. So Wirtz moves to third with Reynolds up now. He's having a good day. Three for three. See if he can keep it going. Get the Red Sox a little closer. And he'll fly out to Minoso on the left, and that'll do it. So the Red Sox squander a big opportunity. They only get one, uh, despite loading the bases with nobody out. But I guess one is better than none. So we'll head to the bottom of the eighth. And to score the White Sox four and the Red Sox two. So Martin up now. He's two for three with a homer and two runs batted in. And he'll line up the second for out number one. So that'll bring up Sherm Lawler, two for three on the day. And he grounds out the shilling for out number two. Hmm, let's see what kind of a hitter loan is, see if they would leave him in. 093. It's two outs and nobody on, and he's the closer. I'm going to assume that they're going to let him hit. Yes, Mr. Brody. Mr. Brody's giving me his two cents worth there. Mr. Brody's disagreeing with that situa that call, but... Oh, another rare play there. This might not be good. Inside pitch. Possibly hits the bat on the elbow. Resolve the hit-by-pitch if the batter is hit by... Check for injury to the hitter, and otherwise just the ball repitch. Turk alone is not hit by the pitch repitch. All right, so nothing too exciting there. That would not have been good if their closer would have been injured there. So 1-5. Oh, and he's got to reach on it. No, he's not. So 1-12, to 12, he would have reached, but instead it's a fly out. Remember to get your copy of the Souvenir Program. So, Red Sox trail by two, going to the ninth, down to the last three outs. Bottom of the other, Nixon Green in the pitcher's spot. So, loan on and try to close it out. So, Nixon up first. He's one for three. Red Sox down by two. And he grounds out to short for out number one. So Pumpsy Green up now. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Oh, let's see what they got on the bench here. He was the hero yesterday, but... Let's see what they got on their bench here. Can't bring in Rapulski again. Could bring up Don now. He's only at 18 at-bats. Carol Hardy. 263. I think we're going to bring in Carol Hardy to pinch hit. So Carol Hardy comes in the pinch hit, making his first appearance of the season. His first pinch hit at bat. 263 hitter with three homers and 36 runs bat in. Red Sox need base runners. A base runner, anyway. So here's the pitch by Lone. 
Oh, and he strikes him out. Look at all those strikeouts there. So Hardy strikes out, and the Red Sox are down to the last out. Let's just check and see what Stallard's. Yeah, he's coming out. All right, so let's see here. So Don Budden, possibly. I wish they would give on base percentage on these guys. Or walks or other, other some other stats you can go by. Just not really enough to make a decision here. I, that's why I really like with um, Digital Diamond Baseball with the coach, the coach's visit box here where it chooses and gives you suggestions of what type of pinch hitter to use based upon what you need. Whether it be getting somebody on base, hitting a home run or whatever. So we're going to go with Don Budden. Don Budden's going to come in and pinch hit. So Don Budden making his first at bat. 263 hitter with six homers and 42 runs batted in. Red Sox down to their last out. Lone looks in for the sign from Lawler. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He needs to get on if this inning is to continue. Ooh, possible error. And that's going to be a fly out, and that'll do it. As the Red Sox fall to the White Sox 4-2. to two. Mr. Brody is very unhappy with that. So let's check out the game stats here. So McLish 1-0, Mamouquette falls to 0-2, Lone with his first save, J.C. Martin with a solo home run. And I know Mr. Brody, huh? Mr. Brody is not very pleased with the Kali Stremski on that one as he grounded into a double play with the bases loaded and nobody out, killing that rally. And the Red Sox fall 4-2. The actual score was... They fell 3-2, to two, so pretty close results there. Let's see what Yastrzemski did on this day. Yastrzemski was 1-4. for four. In this game, he was 0-4. Oh and, ah, uh, that's cool. J.C. Martin actually did hit a home run on this day, a solo home run off Mamba Cat. No, actually he didn't. I'm sorry. That is not a home run there. That is a... Oh, it was a sacrifice hit, not a, not a home run. I thought it said home run. So he was yeah, 0 for 3. On the actual, oh, for two on the actual day. So, all right, so let's see here. Let's check the actual this box score from this game. So, Mc, Cal McLish gets the win, one and oh, seven innings pitch, seven hits. Well, one and oh really doesn't matter because, again, we're not, we haven't played all the White Sauce games, but he gets a win anyway. So, seven innings pitch, seven hits allowed, two runs, only one of them earned, one walk, and six strikeouts. Mamba Cat falls to 0 2, 6 innings pitched, 11 hits allowed, 4 runs, all of them earned, 3 strikeouts, and a home run to J.C. Martin. Tracy Stell, 2 innings of relief, 2 walks, and 1 strikeout. And Turk Lone gets a save for the White Sox. So for the White Sox, Aparicio was 3 for 4 with a stolen base. Nellie Fox, 1 for 4. Jim Landis, 0 for 3 with a walk. Roy Seavers, 1 for 3 with a run scored and a walk. Minnie Minoso, 1 for 4 with a run scored. Al Smith, 2 for 4 with a run scored and two runs batted in. Himself a double. J.C. Martin, 2 for 4 with a run scored and two runs batted in. And Shermwell, a two for four. So I think we're going to give the player of the game to. Ooh, I don't know. 
I think we're going to give it to... It's between, I don't know, we'll give co-MVPs to J.C. Martin and Kel McLish. Both deserving of the MVP honors there as they helped out each other. Al Smith had an honorable mention too, a two for four. Actually, Al Smith had the same exact stats as as J.C. Martin, except Smith hit the double and Martin hit a homer. So maybe slight nods to Martin because of the home run, but anyway. So that is it. As the White Sox beat the Red Sox by a score of four to two, and the Red Sox fall to two and three. So thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. Thank you, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags, for your two cents worth. And we will see you in the next Kari Stremski career replay for his rookie season in 1961. So take care and Happy New Year and God bless.